Welcome to the DieCast episode 11. I want to talk about a podcast that I've been listening to. It's called the Alignment Unclear Party. They're a completely evil party, and both Travis and I really enjoy this. Uh, we suggest you guys check it out as well, uh, especially if you like our antics, because they take our antics and, like, double them. Yeah, because they're evil. There's there's not even the pretense of being morally ambiguous. They're just evil, so they don't have the same limits that... The, at his end, Leaky actually does have some limits on what he will and won't do, and Cesaria has a motivation that would drive her, but these guys don't have that. They're just... They're, they're evil. Uh, and we really hope that you, uh, you check them out. Ready? Set. Roll for initiative. Okay. All right, so this is episode 11, and we are beginning to investigate the missing persons that you guys found in the city of Baldur's Gate. After looking for clues about where the heck the freight, or the, the stolen cargo that came into Baldur's Gate from the Dragon Cult is, you were unable to find anything more substantial than a single individual wearing a dragon necklace that you lost on Cut Track Path, but instead you notice that there are a ton of people who've gone missing lately in the Blackgate sector of Baldur's Gate. And so you've decided to follow up on that by going over to King's Printed Leaflets and Cards, uh, which is on Nebolt Street in Blackgate. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm going to reread through the narration really quickly since it's been a while, and then I'll let you guys proceed into the shop as you want, okay? All right. So Nebolt Street is surprisingly empty when you arrive on it that evening. It's as if something is keeping folks away from the narrow lane. Overhead, the buildings shrug together, no more than an arm span or two uh, from their upper eaves. At the corner of the road, there's a freshly boarded over well covered in graffiti. Broken bottles lay in pieces at its foot. Wash lines string overhead, and pennants and banners fly from some of the windows, uh, but from other windows you can hear talking, you can smell cook fires, that kind of thing. There are a number of small businesses all closed now, mostly related to the employment of porters. Um, but nobody's moving up or down the street. More or less all the businesses at this point in the evening have closed. And moreover, you don't even see any, like, just local residents on the street. Everybody's up and off the street. Uh, there's one pub which has a shield bearing a painting of a cracked helmet hung above its door. And that one's windows and doors stand open. You can hear somebody plucking on a lute and arguing with somebody about whether or not a bard of their caliber deserves to be paid more. And beside that, is a humbly decorated King's Leaflets and Printed Cards, the shop you're looking for. That's open. The lights are the the, the lamps are on inside, and uh, well, it's tough to see what exactly is in there because all of the windows are covered in leaflets, like a crazy person's house. How do you proceed? We probably should go look at, or do you want to go <clears throat> ask around at the pub and then go into the kind of feel out the area, see what's going on, and then go in? I can always sit in the pub while you guys go look at uh, the leaflet place. I'm... I can't I can't read, so... <laughs> Leaky does notice uh, one of the leaflets is the woman that he noticed on the poster from before. And in fact, most of what cover these windows are missing people posters. Okay. Um, so, we're going to... I guess Jen and I are going to proceed into the shop. Okay. Uh, inside you see a crook-backed and frowning man of his late 60s. His fingers and hands are stained from working with inks. And the inside of his shop is covered from ceiling to floor in posters, missing signs, ads, and flyers, and all sorts of stuff for every imaginable business within Baldur's Gate. He's a very experienced artisan who employs several other people to help him with the drawing, but basically... His business is making stuff that you stick to walls and signposts and hand to people on the street when they don't want to be handed anything at all. <laughs> he looks up and laces his hands at you and says, Greetings! Greetings. We saw that you were the one making all the missing person signs? Posters? 
He says, yes. Which one did you see? Do you have any information? We heard that there's a lot of people going missing from Blackgate, and we saw the lady, lady, Laney, Halloran, and the Gordon Rockslider posters. He nods very cordially and says, yes, Laney was a, was a seamstress for Lady Ellenin, and she's gone missing for two weeks now. Gorgon was a little boy. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, can you give us any information on what's happening here? Um, he says that over the course of the last two months, they've had nine people go missing, but the town watch is not concerned. As far as they're concerned, people come and go from Baldur's Gate every day for whatever reasons that drive morals to and fro. So he has been completely unable to get the town guard's assistance in finding these people whose families have reported them missing. And within a city like Baldur's Gate, where people can come and go so easily, and with so many different races and backgrounds and all sorts of stuff going on, it's hard to find somebody. So you would tend to go to a poster maker or an artist to have your flyers drawn, because that's the best way to get the word out about missing people. So he's actually got several several others, um, other people who have approached him, including Elo Harden Slenderfoot's uh, life partner. He was a half-elf. Uh, and Robert Gray, a human porter and a favorite customer of the Cracked Helm Pub, which, although he doesn't know it, Leaky is staring at a painting of uh, Robert Gray, who smiles back at him from a painting behind the bar. He's dressed up like a clown in the actual painting, but he's also holding, like, six empty pints. Like, he just went all the way through it all at once. <laughs> so, um, he's missing, and they're very sad, because... He was probably like fifty percent of the business. <laughs> um, okay. Um, it, have you gotten any information from anyone else knowing where they went to? Um, he suggests that you look around the neighborhoods where they lived. Um, there was one that lived on the corner of Cut Track Lane. Several of them were last seen around Red Porter's uh, Red Porter Road, and also. Uh, Another one lived on one of the residences on Niebold Street. And so if you investigate these areas, he hopes that maybe some seasoned adventurers who are used to looking for lost people can maybe find some clues. Um, who are the people that reported them missing? In the case of Robert Gray, it was the owner and proprietor of the Cracked Helm Pub. After two days of not seeing him, he got real worried that maybe he relapsed into sobriety. So he's concerned <laughs> for his favorite customer. Um, Gorgon Rock Slider's mother came to report him missing, um, and Lanny Halloran, Lady Ellenin, came to, uh, report Lanny Halloran had been missing, too. What was Rock Slider's first name? Gorgon. Oh, I've got that one. A missing one. Gorgon, Lady Halloran, Robert Gray. And Ella Horton Slenderfoot. Yeah, that guy. Uh... <laughs> He's a half-elf priest of Avandra, and so his life partner, who is not a spouse, but just his another monk, has reported him missing. Um, but, unfortunately, our printer has not seen hide or hair of the one that reported him missing for a couple weeks, so he's not sure if what the status is there. Well, we can always start by going and getting, seeing what Leaky found out over in the pub. Good enough. Um, we say thank you to the man, and we say we will follow up on some leads. He's very grateful. He wishes you good luck because he thinks that the pe this people of Baldur's Gate need a better, safer city. Well, he goes into the pub. All right. Uh, in the pub, they offer you some booze, and you watch the bard yell at the proprietor about not being paid enough. They do not come to an agreement. Okay. Um, I'm and gonna you do... see the painting of Robert Gray on the wall behind. I ask about the, the painting. He, the, the proprietor is a uh, stooped man in his 30s with, like, long, greasy black hair. And he goes, ah, good old Bob. I love Bob. Bob was a reliable coin. But it's been, and he counts out his knuckles. He doesn't count on his fingers because he's a strange guy. It's been 12 days since I saw Bob, and that's, that's a lot of beer that he hasn't bought. Have you seen Bob? I haven't seen Bob. He looks like this. And he shows you the painting of, of Robert Gray holding all of the glasses. What's, what's with the glasses? He drank them all. 
He drank them all in ten claps. Sounds like a challenge. It could be. You think you could take old Bob's record? Maybe. Many have tried. A few have drowned. I'd like to try. Okay. <laughs> I have no f idea how we're going to do this. <laughs> I guess it have to be a roll. You, you didn't expect that, did you? I had a feeling the moment I freaking mentioned it, it was going to come up, yeah. But I didn't plan ahead. I didn't realize it was going to go into the bar. <laughs> I had a little be. note about the painting. It was there, but... Frick. Okay. Um, the skills would be... It wouldn't be athletics. That would be crazy. Um, what about... It's performance. A survival check. A survival check? A survival or, check. Or a performance check. No, no it's survival, because you got to avoid drowning, because he's slamming six beers. All right. Okay, so the way we're going to work this is it's... In order to get it within the right clapping beat, you have to get each one a DC 10 or higher. Six in a row. Okay. Which is not good odds. <laughs> okay. So we want to strike up a clapping for him. I'm just clapping my own. Seven! I failed the first one! Bummer! <laughs> he goes, ah, good old Bob's record stands. And then the painting behind you winks. <laughs> Leaky stares. Leaky stares at the painting, looks at his beer. This must be stronger than I thought. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to roll an investigation check. Uh, or not an investigation, a perception check to see if I can hear anything going on in the bar okay. about the missing people. Okay. Critical fail. Nothing. You just hear the faint tinnitus. <laughs> your mind slowly leaking out of your ears. <laughs> All okay. that beer. Um, is that it? That's it. Have we, can okay. we come in now? Yeah. Yeah. I imagine you guys probably came in while I was trying to drown himself. <laughs> You all right, Leaky? By the way, that's five coppers for that beer. Okay. I ask him, why is he wearing a clown suit? Good old Bob liked to entertain the children. In a bar? Not here. That's what he was like on the street. Have you seen Bob? On that poster. Well, <laughs> yes. Have you seen him out in the street? Did he get sober again? Did he go straight? Not that I know of. 27 years I've known Bob. Does he have any family? No. He had a daughter, but she's gone too. Years ago. What happened to her daughter? Or his daughter? Walked out of his life. She said I wasn't a good enough uncle. <laughs> Are you Bob's brother? Nope. Um, do you know why she walked out of his life? Because he's a drunk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. And with that, I bid you, sir, adieu. He does like that rolling hand gesture and bows to you. Goodbye, giant lady. Goodbye, giant lady. I'm going to do a perception check. Okay. Mm, 27. <laughs> <laughs> so you see a lot of things. First, you see some mice in the corners. I want uh, one. You hear the Can faint squeaking of somebody overhead making love. You also <laughs> smell peppers burning on a, on a oil plate somewhere. <laughs> you see the painting of Bob Gray shift a little bit, just kind of uncannily. And you can also smell the freshly oiled sword hanging below the bar. Is there anything else you need to know there, God? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to do it's an... It's been precisely 85 hours since the bartender last showered. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do an investigation check on why the picture is moving. Okay. Uh, 17. It seems to be flickering candlelight. Do you think the bartender will let me look behind the picture? Also... I think that I could one-up this small half-man in this drinking challenge. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Five coppers of beer. All right. It's not great beer, but it was Bob's favorite. Oh, good. I have a negative one in my survival check. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, strike up a clapping. Oh. Wow. Two. You guys suck. <laughs> Sorry, you guys suck. <laughs> What is it? Leaky's gonna try again before we leave. Good lord. Again. Because Leaky must one up the Goliath. You haven't passed your first one either. Shall we go at the same time? For our final try? Alright. What are Let's you doing? Let's do it! What are Meanwhile, we doing? the bard starts to play like the. <laughs> what are we doing? We're, we're battling facing off. <laughs> Can we get a clap? I got an 11. I failed. 
I guess Leaky's the better drinker. Are you going for the full I'll thing? I'll go for the full thing. All right, we've got one success. I got an 11 again. Two, Two successes. successes. Three. Six. Yeah, 16. Three right. successes. Five. Uh, <laughs> it's going to cost you 20 gold, though, because it was four beers total. The one you thought it was coppers. Oh, yeah, coppers. <laughs> nice not, try. Not that good a beer. <laughs> I, I turn to the small man and I say, it is because this beer is inferior to that of my home country. <laughs> Whatever you have to tell yourself, there, worm crusher. Fight nice. Bartender sticks a finger right up his nose and goes to work while he waits for you to pony up. <laughs> I pony up the gold. Great. The copper. I'm so happy to have the gold. Copper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys can go search Kneebolt Street. You can go look for, uh, was it Red Porter Road? Or you can look at Cut Track Lane again. Cut Track Lane you actually visited before. That was the Jagged Which one's Alley. Which closest? Is there anything else? You're here? on Kneebolt Street right now. Well, let's go investigate Kneebolt Street. Okay. Since we're here. All right. Um, so... As you investigate, uh, you head farther down the road from from where you came. Uh, You come to a corner structure at an intersection of a road with boarded off windows and doors. And it might have been a shop once, but it's obviously been abandoned for a very long time. The paint is cracked. The wood itself is beginning to rot around the sills. Um, It it, it looks nasty, right? It looks like the kind of place you'd expect in a rundown section like Blackgate. Um, and you can also see the charred remains of fire licking at the window sill and the threshold. But when you try to peer between the boards, you can't see much more. But at the very edge of your hearing, you can hear scrabbling or chittering coming from within. Something small. It's a mouse. Um, so it just says, so Kyle knows, because he wasn't here for when we w- did our last check. When we went and we checked, um, what was the name of it? Cut Track Lane. Cut Track Lane. Um, there was a door that had blood lung cr- uh, written across the doorway, um, and we found out by a check that it was a sickness, where okay. you essentially cough up your lung. Wonderful. So, so it seems like there has been tragedy befallen on at least two of these locations. Okay, so what do you want to do? Are you going to... Perception check it? Okay. 15 plus 8, 20... 3. 3. Okay. Within, you can hear something moving around. In fact, something very small. Maybe something koboldy. But as you peer at the building, you hear a faint thwip of bowstrings behind you. Roll for initiative. Which, Cesaria's ridiculous senses tell her, those are regular old short bows. (laughs) Okay. What are your scores, please? 22. 20. 17. Okay. I thought it was plus 2 to your initiative. It was. Oh. I just added it there. Oh. So that way... Just remember, it... that's only when you're using Tide. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's be... not a constant initiative bonus. It's only when you rush into battle with Tide. Oh, that's true, so it was lower then. Yeah, so leave it at the... Considering they're probably ranged, they're, probably going to have... Bows. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to shoot at them. 15. Right. 15. So um, they had surprise on you, so I'm actually going to roll two... Range attacks on each one of you. Okay. No. Uh, I'm going to rage, which means I can't be surprised. I got you. So here is the setting, right? You are, you guys are peering inside the broken down shops, boarded up nastiness. Both strings have been fired from above you and behind you. So you hear the thwip. You immediately go into a rage because, well, nothing sneaks up on you. <laughs> and so you turn around in a rage and you realize that they are up above. They're 20 feet across the street and about 20 feet up on the next story. So, 40 feet. 40 feet. Okay. So, I don't know how far up you can get. I suppose if you move more than, like, 10 or 15 feet, you're out of their range immediately anyway. So, are you just going to, like, rage and go charging it wherever the sound came from? No, I have hand axes. They're, they're, can... they're, the, the bow shots came from within windows. Oh. So, they've sprung a trap on you. Okay. Does Lee, are you familiar with this? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So this is a foreign situation, so you should probably just do whatever your instinct is, and if you want to throw an axe at the building, go ahead. <laughs> For all I know, you'll knock the damn thing down. <laughs> so they're, they're coming from windows. They're coming from windows. Yeah, you guys have been ambushed. Okay. Uh, I am actually... So it's this, like the second or third story windows from the building behind us. Yep, which looks like a regular old residence. Okay, so it's open. 
Windows are open, but they're dark. There's no lights within. The first floor windows are open? Nope, they're boarded. They're all boarded. Okay. I'm going to go charging in. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you can cross the street and make your check if you want. It is a strength athletic check of 17 to, to pry the wood off the door. I wasn't going to pry. Okay. I was going to shoulder check through them. Okay, it's still a, seven, a check of 17, which shouldn't be an issue for you. No, especially since I have advantage. Oh, God. Because I'm raging. <laughs> That's a 20, that's a 21. So Leaky goes crashing through the boards into the lower floor of the room, and you find a big room with stairs, but it's going to take you another turn to get up above. Okay. But you can easily move up. Everything's been stripped. This is the first thing you notice. Like, nobody really lives here. This is a foreclosed-upon corner house. Okay. I'm going to ready an action, ready an attack action. Do you have another action on your turn? Because we're in combat, and you made an action check. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's my but turn. Next turn, you'll be able to move up with no yeah, issue. Yeah, that's my okay. turn. Okay. That makes it their turns. So, two of the shots automatically miss because they were intended for you, and you have since moved. <laughs> with frightening speed. <laughs> the other two are going to roll against Corey and Cesare. I'm going to start with Corey since she's higher up on the initiative roll to begin with. Okay. Okay. So, uh, they are shortbow round or shortbow rolls mm -hmm. made against each of you. Um, but they're not made with advantage, so. First one rolled a 14. Nope. Nope. Crashes into the wood behind you, and you see it is a wickedly barbed little thing. There's a second one coming at you, though. Eight. Nope. Nope. All right, Sorry. ready? Mm-hmm. 18. Yep. For 10 damage. Ow. Ouch. Some of that is poisonous. It begins to burn immediately. So you might want to pull that arrow out. And then the second one is a 16. Yes. Yeah, if it matches, then yes. yes. Right. So that yep. one's for six damage. Burns. So there's poison on these, on these so darts. 16 damage. Yep. Ouch. It's a hard first hit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Okay. And it's worth noting, <clears throat> for those of you that are not glued to the ground because you are of the mountain bones, it's only like 20 feet up, and the windows are open. <laughs> I said it was 40 feet up. No, it's 20 feet, 40 feet, 20 foot total laterally. He, he just thinks in terms of straight distance. <laughs> Trigonometry has not yet been discovered by the Golden Tur tribe. So we'll get there. All the right. pot noose and everything. I love that on the first floor of this thing, you have realized, you've discovered <laughs> trigonometry on your own, waiting to be able to go up the stairs. Because <laughs> he's like, wait a second, I could have probably just jumped that gap. It was only 20 feet. Instead, I charged, I just chose to rage my way through the door. <laughs> Damn it, Leaky, I did it to myself again. <laughs> okay, so uh, they had surprise on you. That's going to make, we're going to reset the rounds. So now it's Leaky, then Corey, then Arcultus, and then Cesari is kind of stuck at the very end. I'm sorry. It's a long time to wait. Yeah, it is. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> Sir Isaac, <laughs> you have the stairway, which is it's a 10-foot landing, simple stairs. And I guess you can run up them if you choose, and I can tell you what you see up there. I do. Okay, there's three doors up at the top of the landing. They're all within five feet. One of them is open, and within you can see two of the of the robed individuals holding short bows standing at a window. I'm going to charge them. Charge at them. That's 20 feet, so it's right within like range, correct? Uh, 35. My, my... Oh, yeah, so you, you, have spare, you have space to spare. Yep. Um, I'm actually going to... No, because if I push them out the window, then I lose my second attack. Because it's a that'd be an ability check action, action, not a not an attack option. So attack yep. them and then push them out the window. I can't. Yeah. I mean, if I'm charging, this I would be a DM call. If we were to do this, we would need to make it an unarmed strike. And so in that case, I don't think you roll a damage die. You just do your blunt damage, and then they would take any fall damage if applicable. But if you critically fail. You I'm go out the window, out the window. <laughs> just making that clear. <laughs> okay. So it's an unarmed strike, like Are a shoulder butt, it? basically. So that would be a D4. You unarmed are strike. strong enough to kill them with this. Unarmed strikes are <laughs> D4. Okay. <laughs> yeah, All right. Because you add your damage modifier to it, don't you? Yep. D4 plus 4 plus 2. 
because I'm raging. So yeah, minim- minimally, you could kill him. Minimum, I'm doing seven damage. Okay, so Leaky goes charging down the hallway. I imagine yelling something at the top of his lungs. I'm just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> They don't know how you got up there that fast. <laughs> Through the doorway, right across the room. And I'm going to shoulder check one of them out the window. We're going to try. Try. Okay. I'm assuming I'm proficient with my hands. Yes. What okay. Proficient shoulders? on arm strikes. Okay, so... Armor class is 12, so you hit. Yeah, that's a 15. Okay. And so, I do 7 damage. So you drive him through the window. You do 7 damage. Plus, he's falling 20 feet, which is 2d10. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he breaks his neck on the ground. <laughs> and the other one is like... <laughs> and I turn and attack the other one. Yep. And this time you have your weapons in your hand. Yes, I do. I already had the great the the great axe drawn. Yep. I just shoulder-checked the first one. 12. Ties it. It's a hit. So it's a killing blow. Don't even bother with the math. Seven. Do you want nine. to narrate the death that you just dealt? After I shoulder checked his buddy out the window, and he turns with the very confused look of how did he get here? <laughs> I cleave him in half <laughs> with the great axe. And a pink mist goes all over the walls. I paint the room red. Red rum. <laughs> red rum. <laughs> Okay, uh, that makes it Corey's turn now that the that's madness changed. is you're over. Still, you're still down on the street level. Uh huh. Okay. Apparently, it's a hypotenuse of 20 feet to get to the window. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could go up through the giant gaping hole he left in the wall, or you no. could try to make an act. 40. Or you could try to make an acrobatics check to would get that, up into the window. Would that take over my attack? It would, but it would put you right up there. Okay. In the meantime, you could go through the hole. It would still take you two turns, roughly, to get up there. Okay. Um, so I will try jumping. You could, da- you could dash and get up to the second floor and not have to use a movement for the first. Oh, that's true. Maybe I will dash. I'll do a dash. But it would still take up my thing if I'm dashing because I'd be going... Because s- now I'll get 30 feet. Mm. If you do a dash, you can move 60 feet and get up to the but same But I feel like, as a character, at. I have to one-up you. So I'm going to do an acrobatics check. Okay. <laughs> Which is not going to be great for me, considering my dexterity is awful. But, once again, <laughs> in the need to one-up you. have to outdo the dwarf, huh? All right, so what kind of check do I have to pass? For acrobatics? Yeah. Uh, 15. 15? <sighs> yeah, 15 allows you to scale the face of the building. Oh, no. You got to do it, though. It's your character. That's true. All right. Nope. I got a 13. <laughs> oh, man. So you cartwheel and flip your way across the street and reach up, but just slam into the face of the building. <laughs> <laughs> but you're close enough now that you can get up into combat next turn. <laughs> you're, like, standing slightly dazed at the top of the stoop. Okay. Cultist time. Two are dead. Two are dead. <laughs> One of them is twitching on the street. The other ones are going to shoot at Cesaria. Uh, I might die. Two are going to engage you. They can't see Corey because the angle is <laughs> weird. Like there's like a potted plant hanging out of the window that you can't quite see. <laughs> so anyway, so Cesario, you got a couple of bolts coming at you. Okay. I'm gonna die. Possibly, but that one missed. It went wild. Probably because they're terrified. That one is a twelve. No. Okay, they all miss. Woo! We live. Yeah. You, however, you've got scimitars coming at you. They are not poisoned. Probably. Thirteen. No. Why do I bother? <laughs> 18. No. Closer. Okay, so you've got two that are now physically on top of you within I d- striking I, range. Yes. I definitely dodged both of those. <laughs> so wiggling, I, do, I, do the fork, I do the fork in the garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> wiggling in your fancy pants. You blind them with that's your majestic That's true. You are wearing fancy butt. pants. Yes, that's right. I am still wearing the fancy pants. You blind them with your majestic butt. I feel like wiggling in your you fancy pants is probably them. the episode title. You dazzle them with your assets. <laughs> anyway. Okay. They have all tried to attack you. Cesaria, the chosen time has finally come. Okay, so Cesaria, the chosen time has finally come. You get to finally move. <laughs> Yay! 
And so. you could flip up into the windows if you so chose. That would be a 15 acrobatics check. Or you could just take the stairs like a normal person. <laughs> I'm going to go inside the building and attempt to... Would it be a medicine check to rip the arrow out? No, you just pull it out. Okay. And I'm going to rip the arrow out. Okay, so you're going up. Are you dashing up to get up to the second floor? Yeah. Okay, are you going... I, I think you'd be just short of the room, which means you'd probably be out of combat for this turn, but nobody else would hit you with anything. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, you do have that. I guess you could structure your turn that way. Yeah. So dash and then attack? Well, if she's just outside of the room, then... She could dash as a bonus action, which still gives her her full movement, or doubles her movement, and then she could... But if she... Know. Even if the dash brings her outside the room, she can't do anything else but take a sneak action... Yeah, oh, I could. Just, oh, stealth, yeah. Yeah, one better roll she can for use... stealth. No, because nobody's looking at you. Okay, stealthy. She's officially stealthed. Okay. That makes it... Leaky's turn. Leaky's turn. Leaky has two cultists on him. Uh, you would add your strength modifier to that. Okay, thank you. Okay, ready? No. <laughs> Are you ever? No. <laughs> Uh, oh. oh, critical fail. You slip and fall in the and just the gore <laughs> from below and you lose your second the attack. The pink mist, as it were. <laughs> the However, for the first time since you set out with Cesaria, when you fall, your nethers are not exposed. <laughs> because you're in the fancy pants. The fancy pants. <laughs> Which are now covered in coverage. blood and you have to explain that oh, when yeah. you return. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to buy the fancy pants. <laughs> The reason Leaky critically failed is because he's not used to wearing pants. That's true, yeah. You just can't quite... The inseam got in the way. Yeah. Blame it on the inseam. Yep. Not the raving to. madness. Nope. Squish your nether. All right. Uh, that makes it Corey's turn. Corey is standing on the stoop down below. You're going to try to flip A up there. A little dazed. <laughs> um, at this point, um, since Leaky is no longer watching and he just made a fool of himself, I can be okay with but the fact that... But you don't know I made a fool of myself because you're downstairs. I'm, I'm sure, upstairs. I'm sure I heard He hurt. She heard. She heard. Yeah, she heard the... <laughs> yeah, she heard the <laughs> when you squished your nethers. I promise I will get a good laugh when I get up there and see you covered in blood from the floor. All right. The so blood I'm... of my enemies. <laughs> So I'm going to move up the stairs. How do you know they were your enemies, though? <laughs> you killed them without asking. <laughs> you didn't even ask to see their identification. <laughs> Hello? All right, so I'm going up the stairs, and I'm going to put an attack towards um, one of the cultists. Okay. So you're charging up the stairs. Um, 14 That's plus a hit. 8. She comes charging into the room and swings at the first thing she sees. <laughs> Hopefully it's not leaking. <laughs> um, and I do 12 damage. You kill. All right. Do you care to narrate? Um, I, I, with one hand, I swing and I chop off the head. And with my other hand, I point at Leaky and put out a single, ha! <laughs> 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 Leaky flails helplessly after a little bit. Okay, so we've, we've lost three of our, of our six cultists yep. that had ambushed you. So you've got two that are standing over top of you. No, there's one. Oh, there's one that's standing over top of you. Corey just I'm killed giving, one. That's true, yeah. I'm giving him advantage because he's standing over top of you, and you're prone. And you're fancy paint. You're bloody fancy paint. It pants. didn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help yeah. at all. So he completely misses. He must slip in the blood, too, and nearly goes down. Or he and also then, starts laughing. <laughs> yeah. there, there are two more that have their arrows, and they're going to fire at you okay. from across the room. So that would... They're within across the hall? She's, she's in the room with you. She yeah, but all they... of them are in the room. It's a one big room. Oh, you had oh, said okay. that you, he only saw. Room. He said there were. Th you said there were three doors. There were three doors. So we didn't know. Only one was. was open, and when you charged in, you immediately butted the one and didn't ask any other questions. <laughs> so they're going to shoot arrows at you. Okay. Um, nobody can see Cesare at the moment. So one of them rolls a seventeen. Hits for ten damage. Okay. Four of its poison. Okay. Ouch! It burns a little bit. Second one is going to roll, and he does 13 no. on the shot. Okay, so the second arrow goes wide. And that makes it Cesaria's turn, and she is very sneaky. Sneaky, 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 sneaky. I might need more D6. <laughs> Get her the box. <laughs> And once again, this is where Jen literally rolls all of the dice in the game. I need, big, I need bigger hands. My hands are the size of a three-year-old. 
See, I have this problem. <laughs> I have these tiny hands. <laughs> it makes me so angry. Let me go on Twitter. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, no, I don't. We're good. Yay! To be fair, though, I have the best hands. Okay. I am going to charge up to one of them and try and hit one with Tide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nine plus nine, so 18. So at one point he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> My God. That's. So six. That's at least 12, 16 damage. 14. Four, yeah, 14, 18, 20. Do you, do you want to narrate now that you've, you've doubled his health? I ran up, stabbed him in the spine with Tide, pulled out, kind of twisted on the way out so that way it was. Somewhat painless. Consider that a pro lover tip. Yeah. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to re-sneak. And she's... So, she stabbed the dude in the spine. <laughs> With a stealth she check of 18. Gave a little twist on the way out after severing his central nervous system and then vanished. <laughs> it's a whirling cloak of darkness. And that makes it Leaky's turn. And Leaky is currently scrabbling in the blood-soaked floorboards. Trying not to rip the fancy pants. <laughs> You're going to blow otherwise, butt. otherwise, I want to be clear. You don't have your hair cloak yet. You'll be literally butt naked. <laughs> so you don't wear a shirt. Are you still shirtless? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't give you a fancy pants shirt. I gave you a fancy pants. It's not a romper. We should make the title of this one The Fancy Pants. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Or um, it's not a romper. <laughs> so do I need to roll a check to get up? No, you can okay. stand up. I stand up. I look at the one who has just fallen by Cesaria's hand. Or blade. How do you know it was her, though? She's sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> She's just gone. <laughs> okay, fine. The one that suddenly has a new hole in its back. <laughs> and is now painting the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More paint. It's not war paint. It's more paint. <laughs> <laughs> and I see the ones across the room and charge at them. <laughs> there's two there with the bows. Oh, there's one standing on top. If you move, I'm going to give an attack of opportunity against you. She just killed him. Oh, was it that one? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's derelict at his duty. <laughs> He's painting the floor. <laughs> I could probably describe you guys as different forms of art, right? <laughs> like, Leaky is obviously Jackson Pollock, and Corey is a little bit more skillful. We'll call her Picasso, right? But the way that Cesaria kills is like Microsoft Paint's paint bucket. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like Picasso during his blue period. Yeah, just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Slap it on there. Call it good. All right. <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. I see it. <laughs> yeah, that's an 18. He's dead. With nine. He's dead. <laughs> narrate. 14, narrate. 17 damage. You've run out of fingers to count on. Narrate. <laughs> He hit learn trigonometry. You gotta give him a little bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to take a nap. <laughs> His brain hurts. Stop doing math. So, I slide across the floor on my knees in the fancy pants. Because now they're blood covered, they're not gonna want them back anyway. I'm already you just gonna have to the pay. knees right out. <laughs> yeah. I'm already gonna have to pay for them. Yeah, so. you just blew the knees out of the fancy pants. <laughs> And sweep the legs out with the great axe and sever them at the knees. Good God. <laughs> okay. I, I stop, get up, turn around, and swing at the other one, who I'm now behind. Can I get advantage? Can you just watch this friend get murdered? I don't know if that's... I'm also behind him. I have my, my black warp token here. I'm going to use this to give the other guy a reaction since you just moved within him, but he's going to try to make a grapple action against you. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. So he's going to attempt to grapple you Is it like because you came within five feet, but he failed. <laughs> he grabs your waistband really hard, though. That's my black token action. Okay. So he's got you by the waistband, but he hasn't grappled you. 
It's like the only reaction you could possibly think of is like when you grab an angry <laughs> child by the waist. He's <laughs> not sure what's going to happen now. You're but a leash. Am I, am I facing him or am I behind he's him? He's got you from behind. Okay. Like he's got his hand in the waistband of your pants. Don't rip my fancy pants. <laughs> that's, that's what my black token's for, to fix that bad roll. But he's, he, he, I mean, you could move, but he's got you by the, by the waistband. What bad roll? That was a fantastic roll. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm manipulating with the, with the warp token a little bit. So he's, he hasn't grappled you. He's just got you by the waistband. Okay. Just beware. All right. So I'm going to take the great axe and swing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I'm, I'm short. Okay. But if you get a critical fail, the follow-through might hit you in the back. Or in the ass. Right in the fancy pants. <laughs> <laughs> will split your fancy pants right along the seam. Oh! A two. You miss. That's a, that's a total 10. You miss. His armor class is 12. Okay. Bummer. He's got you by the pants. For six seconds, he's going to have this moment. Don't worry. I've got him by the fancy pants. Okay. That makes it uh, his turn. No, it's, it's Corey's, Corey's turn, turn, so there's yeah. only one living left alive. <laughs> one living, one, one left, living alive. left alive. All right, um, so I'm going to swing at set. I'm going to move up and then swing at person holding fancy pants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's so focused on the fancy pants. Um, so I, I have a... You hit him. I hit him with 17. Okay. Um, and I hit for 10. Okay, you, you kill him. Do you want to narrate that? Is he dead dead or can I incapacitate him? He's dead dead. Okay. Um, so I swing and I cut off his arm. Yeah. And then stab him. But then I hold on to the arm, which is still holding on to Leaky's fancy pants. <laughs> 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 and I say, now two of us have you by the fancy pants. <laughs> That's a chain reaction right there. <laughs> okay, so he has been severed. The pants have been maintained. That sort of is and everybody, knees. Is yeah, the knees are destroyed. Dead? And they're now red fancy pants. Oh yeah. <laughs> they were a nice black at one point, but now they're just they're just Dingy. nasty. <laughs> they're just gross. They're like a solid okay, scab so at this that point. That kills everybody. That ends the combat. <laughs> and you get there's a total a pool of uh three hundred six six hundred experience split three ways, so two hundred apiece. I'm doubling because there was they, they outnumbered you two to one. So it's two hundred experience piece. And Jen, what was your what's your experience at? So I'm supposed to be basing mine off of yours. Before or after the two hundred? Either one. After she she doesn't know the number yet, so if you just give her after, you guys will have the okay. same. Okay, after is two eight three oh five. Okay, thank you. I was one turn from ripping them pants off. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got experience done. When you failed, I got so excited that she murdered him. <laughs> okay, now that you've got experience done. Okay. I turn and look at Corey and go, let go of my fancy pants. And, and I say, it seems you're in a very compromising position here. Compromising it may be, but I still got more kills than you. Yes. <laughs> leave him and with that I pull the elastic out of your fancy pants so now you have to hold them up I hold them up walk over to one of the dead cultists and take his robe rope and tie it around my waist <laughs> <laughs> you look poor and poor <laughs> okay um, They're now not so fancy pants. But my butt still looks fantastic. Popper's pants. <laughs> fantastic, but it's covered in gore and grime. <laughs> so now instead people so are going, ooh, like they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so inside the house, I assume you guys are going to investigate, yeah. correct? Yeah. Inside the house, which is mostly empty, you find a long table down on the first floor behind the stairs, like in the kitchenish area. Uh, with a heavy bag of copper coins and iron squares, which is a local currency for messenger children. And there are a number of parchments on the table describing your whereabouts and your movements over the last day. 
And as you leaf through these, you realize you've been watched the entire time. Yay. That doesn't surprise me. How would you know? Look you can't at this read. <laughs> Everybody's this been is, watching. There's one of them that just says he was cartwheeling in a square, <laughs> cavorting like an idiot. <laughs> made, made no less than five children cry. <laughs> Fought with the half-orc. <laughs> I didn't fight with him. I just yelled at him. Another one says, can we steal the kilt? <laughs> Does that source of power? <laughs> Okay, so um, where else do you want to investigate in the house? Uh, the two closed doors. Okay. Are they locked? No. Okay. We go One in. is a bedroom. The other appears to be a drawing room with empty bookshelves stripped bare. Nothing particularly of interest. Is there anything behind the bookshelves? Are we ripping them down? <laughs> <laughs> Can we roll a perception or an investigation check to see if there's any trap doors or secret rooms? Um, in this room? Yeah, sure. Sure. No. <laughs> no! <laughs> Still no. <laughs> Fine. I'm going to go to the bedroom and do the same. Okay. Yes. Wow! <laughs> you get really sleepy just seeing a bed. I got a 19 for the Still no traps. <laughs> okay. We're not looking for traps. We're looking for secret doors. Same idea, I think. Nothing except to the dreams for the nap time you <laughs> want to take right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to the murder room okay. and do the same thing. And okay. hopefully not roll a critical fail this time. There are that still was, open windows. That was two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 20. Unfortunately, there's no secret passages. Oh. A slight breeze, though, does ruffle your hair. Is there also. anything... I the... have no hair to ruffle. It's all straight. Mohawk. It's like a fin. <laughs> it ruffles my entire head. <laughs> You're feeling aerodynamic at the moment. <sighs> I'm going to do an investigation check on the cult to see if they have anything on them that, like, info-wise. Okay. Uh, 24. Nothing interesting? Nothing particularly interesting. Um, so, should we go and check out the kid's house? Or... The one who was stolen, the courier child. Because they said they found the money that usually they'll pay courier children. This is the house. Oh, this is the house, okay. Yeah. This is the last time they were seen is here at this Neville Street. House. I thought we were at the house across the street. So No, that work. burned out shop. It, it was rigged. I think we should probably take the money. Yeah. Okay. There are And we should I also just have a bag of copper coins. So let's call it fifty. And uh, four iron squares used to pay messengers. We'll take the four iron squares too. Then we can pay messengers. Okay. We're just going to be carrying around four iron squares for the rest of the campaign. Probably. <laughs> or we'll just send messenger children wherever we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, riding home. Go ahead of us and tell of our tell of our arrival. Send them to their. Hide dad. your daughters. Hide your wives. <laughs> <laughs> Bury your valuables. <laughs> Watch out, the elf one has knives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you talk of. <laughs> Send messages back and forth to each other. <laughs> Hide your soap boxes. Don't let them see. Stop. Continue the conspiracy. You're going to break them. Go. Put them down. I appreciate the rhymes. Put them down. Play with your cube. I don't want to play with my cube. I don't care. Put the warp tips down before you break them even more. Play with your cube. Okay. Um, anything else you want to do here at the Neibolt Street one? Um, is there any other signs of what might have happened to the child? Nope, just that at some point they were hiring messengers out of here to watch you and probably to watch other adventurers. Okay. Um, and anybody else who got too close to that shop across the street. Okay. Let's go investigate the shop across the street. Yeah, let's do that. There's some people standing on the road. They're really concerned about the racket, <laughs> screaming, <laughs> the man that flew out of a window and died on the street front. The one watch of, has not arrived yet. One of them says, I know that guy. His name is Frank. Why did you throw Frank out the window? Why did Frank shoot arrows? Why was Frank a cultist? It's okay, people. <laughs> Why are you asking me? I'm We're like, adventurers. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Great. What are you? Okay. Um, what are you, Mr. If you want to pry Pants? the wood off the front of that shop, it's going to be a DC 17 strike check again. Get it, Lakey. And as soon as you start doing it, they're going to start protesting. They'll, like, leave that place closed. It's been like that for years. It's nasty inside. 
Can I ask, do a perception check to ask the people? Six. You fail. Those boards of bond, they're so long, they're just part of it. <laughs> so now Cesaria can resume her conversation with the nice townsfolk. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? To the shop? Yeah. They're like, there was a fire. He was a printer and he was... Then why is it nasty inside? Well, because it got burned out like 20 years ago and we closed it off, but nobody wanted to buy it because it was fire damaged and it's going to collapse at any point. Have you seen what happened to Cut Track Lane? No. Well, the, it's the road down the street there where the other burned out buildings collapsed. So, you know, nobody wants Why was everything field. setting on fire? Well, that's a whole different story. There's this one time where all the fire demons came loose out of the sewers. Like, a couple of them just were like, oh, no. I don't <laughs> want to think about it, how weird that year was. Um, so, we thought we saw a movement inside of the building. I strength checked a two to open the door. You stub your toe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am not going to attempt to break and Talk enter. I am not going to attempt to break and enter. Um, so instead I asked the people, we saw movement in there. Are you sure that nobody has been in there? Like nobody has been in or out of that building in 20 years. It's been boarded off. We don't want the kids play there. We, nobody even lives in the adjacent building. It's not safe. Just stay away. Whatever you want, go down the street. Get out of this neighborhood. They don't want you here. Is the adjacent building open? Uh, <laughs> as far as you can see, there's a door. <laughs> We're going to go open shut. the door. It's shut for the night. Is it locked? Are you going to try it? Yes. It's locked. Strength take the door. I'm going to sleight of hand the door and try to unlock it. Oh, crap. I don't have any thief stools. I do. So meanwhile, all these people still have their nice shirts and caps, so you're just picking a lock. So it's like, call the watch. They're back. So I'm going to slide them in the door. I'm going to say, excuse me, good sirs, we need to get out of here. We, let's go to the next location. Are you them to leave? Yeah, I'm going to intimidate them to leave. Yes. Lady's <laughs> <laughs> charisma so like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it like runs like a cat being chased. <laughs> So I have plus four to my intimidation. What does that go against? Oh, it only goes up to eight, though. That's enough for me. <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh, she starts running. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll go. Okay. Okay, so you know that uh, another person went missing on Red Porter Road, and also there was one on Cut Track Lane. Let's go to Red Porter Road. Okay. Uh, even at this time of night, Red Porter Road is much busier than Nebold Street. There's some businesses that still stand open, a couple restaurants. There's men and women moving up and down the road. Some of them are even still carrying cargo, um, although none of it seems particularly suspicious to you. Uh, it just rotated on me. They talk and joke as they go there and ignore you. People are kind of out and about having a good time right now. Um, and you see a couple watchmen go running by in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do a stealth check to hide my face. That's a 19. Thankfully, nobody was looking. <laughs> um, up and down the road, you see a number of residences, brownstone apartments and stuff that nestle between shops and pubs, but only one of these draws your eyes, and that's because the windows are boarded off, even on the upper stories, and the words blood lung here are painted across doorboards, warning you away. Might be contagious. It might be. This also might be their way of hiding the fact that there's actually something else going on here. Can we cover our mouths? Is that a proper mask against you, blood lung? You could tie a kerchief, kerchief. around your throat. Okay. Since you this is this, you got no spare clothes. Do you want? I'm gonna rip the leg off my fancy pants. <laughs> tie it around my to face. To be fair, the knees, have, the knees already have been blown off. Now they're fancy. Now he's got one full shorts leg and one pair of shorts. <laughs> and if you don't think I'm gonna draw this on the cover art, you <laughs> best f believe the opposite. <laughs> He has one pant and one short. Yes. <laughs> I've got my handkerchief. This is a literal <gasps> pant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, and I will take off something. I think I have extra traveler's clothes, so I'm going to use a piece of that to tie around my mouth. Okay. So you guys are tying stuff around your mouth as you go into... Are you, are you prying the boards off? Yep. Roll a strength check. They're nailed on there pretty good. Seven. Nine. 
25. Natural 20. Natural 20. As people start to gather and look at you trying to pry your way into the quarantined house, Corey rips one of the boards off. Okay, <laughs> Beave, are you going to tease Leaky at all? You know what I'm saying? Well there, it looks like you are need to compensate for a few things. The yeah, I, com- I, into the street. I compensate quite well with my kill count. Then... With your kill count? Kill, kill count. count. Oh. I heard kilt out. I was like... I, that's what I heard, and I was I like, what? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> okay, uh, you're proceeding? I'm going to do a perception check. We <laughs> should have done that before we ripped the boards <laughs> off. <laughs> well, 22. You smell tobacco smoke from come from inside. Something fresh, not stale. I'm going to stealth check. Are you stealth checking through the... I don't understand what you're doing. The door is still closed. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. It's not very high. You can see it from here. Why don't we just open the door and go in? <laughs> Let's go in. I'm st- trying to stealth at 12, so that way I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's not working, because it's a brightly lit street. <laughs> All right, we ha- I head in. I follow. Okay. I go behind. The in my lower pants. floor is very dark, but the stink of tobacco is very strong, and as you step in, someone slams the door shut behind you, and they yell, Get him! Roll for initiative. I knew it was a f- trap. <laughs> 11. Wow, that's a rolling. Oh. Advantage. Ten. Wait, you get advantage on all initiative rolls now? Yes. Good God. Feral instinct. Right. Even though you're not being surprised, technically? Yep. Okay, I'm operating on the assumption that you guys are pretty aware that something's going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, w- walk me through your initiative scores one more time, please. 21. 11. 5. Okay, do you guys have dark vision? Yes. Yes. I don't know. I might not. You... Fighting in the dark means you're making everything with disadvantage until either you... Light a torch or... Light a torch or make some way to find some light. Rip a door off. <laughs> that is a possibility. <laughs> the of this game. I do not have dark vision. Okay, Cesario, what you see are three heavy... Or two heavily armed... No, Cesario, what you see are three heavily armored men, strongly muscled, and you see one... Man in a robe, a red robe behind him with a dragon clutch on his neck. I'm using two warp chips. Two of those are not armored. Okay. I'm going to lower their armor class by three. One is still heavily armored. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so it's Jen's turn. It's Zarya's turn. I'm not giving them surprise. So um, because of the way that you guys goofed off at the door, you were pretty sure there was something in there. So, uh, Cesaria, it's your turn. They are across the room from you, except for one of them who is wearing heavy armor, and he's right behind you. He's the one that slammed the door shut. What are you rolling? Tied. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thirteen. That is enough to hit him. Six. Twenty. Twenty damage. Um. I want to use my bonus action to stealth. <laughs> okay. After I just slaughtered his people. But you didn't kill anybody. No. Oh, no. Oh, damn. So. I'm going to attempt to stealth. 15 plus 8. He's staring right at you. <laughs> damn. Although, he's a human, He's a human, so I, he can't see very well in the dark, so I'll give it to you. Okay. But I'm going to raise his perception, so just a little bit. Okay. Uh, he yells, oof, and then it's their turn. Oh, that's so right. He next. was the heavy, heavily armored one. So uh, the first one, who is unarmored. Yells, uh, where'd you go? And they're going to start charging in. But he's going to roll a perception check to see if he can see you. He rolled a three. So he fails. And they move in close to like press up against you to try and press you against the walls. The second one is going to go charging at Leaky. And he is wielding a mace. We've established that maces are not effective against me. No, you're raging, correct? Uh, no, I haven't had my turn yet. Right, okay. So then they do, they do a multi-attack, I just, because it's a uh, bludgeoning, so. 10 plus 4. 14, miss. Nope. Second attack on him. 18. Nope. Oh, bummer. They miss. Okay. And then the third one, the one with the armor that's standing behind you guys, is going to swing at Jen with his mace. Six. I thought you gave her her stealth check. Oh, right, she's stealth, so he's swinging at Corey. 16. Um, nope. 
and no? 17. Wow, okay. And second one is a four. <laughs> nope. Definitely not. Okay, that makes it... My turn. Leaky's, oh. Leaky's turn. Your turn. All right. All right. So three of them have, have moved now. This, this, this one's normally their chunk, like good guys, bad guys. This one's not. So I have one right on top of me. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. I'm going to rage. Fair. Which Wait, I forgot to use my out. rage for the last one. Whoa. Let me just this real quick. It's gonna, it's gonna be relevant. Just a moment. Can you take this one? Because I'm already on the spell. So thank you. There we go. So their attack in the dark was ill thought out. They probably should have lit a lamp. <laughs> if they're human and they can't see, they should be attacking with disadvantage. The one of them knew where you were because he just walked in the door. Okay. The other one missed completely. That is a... 17. That's a hit. For one... Are you hitting the damaged one or the one that's on top of you? I actually, I guess it would have to be the one on top of you, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a hit. So one, five, six, eight damage. First attack? Yep. All right. Now uh, and I'm going to swing the second attack, and that's a 20, not natural, for 16, 18 more damage. There's a killing blow. Wow. Was that the armored one? That was one. In... It was an unarmored one. No, that was one of the unarmored ones. Okay, so you killed him in one blow. Two blows. Two blows. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Damn fancy paint. So the, the next one is the cultist that was standing behind them. Uh -huh. And all you hear is him yell for the glory of Tiamat, and then he's going to he summons a big fireball above his head. And everybody's gonna need to make some dexterity saving throws before I get crazy with my D6s. I need, I need eight of them. I need I get advantage on dexterity saving you do, throws. You're gonna take half the damage no matter what. I need eight D6s. Uh quarter, because I'm raging. Even still, I hate these sixes because everybody's going to take some damage from this, including my other guys. This might very rapidly end this. So, um, do you need more? I'm going to also cast Aura of Protection on myself. As a reaction? Um, I guess so. Um, so no, it's. No, I guess so. Are you allowed to as a reaction? It says creature within ten feet gains a bonus to saving throws equal to my charisma modifier. I don't know what how that would be useful any other place as except as a reaction. Okay. I can read it from the book, too, if you'd like to get more information no, on it. Sorry. Okay. That's probably what it's meant to do. Oh, did I not roll? Doesn't look like it. I knocked your roll. That was my low one, anyway. I critically failed, anyways. I got... You took full damage. Took full damage. Uh, I got 10. I got 23. Okay, Bite I, me. That's enough for you to pass. You're taking a quarter. <laughs> I need to flip back and I need to look at my spell. You got 10, Cesare? Ten. Spell save DC 11. Oh, man. So, this I is going to real freaking gnarly. Hang on. We got 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus... Five. 30 damage. To each of us? Everybody. Okay. I need, to, I need to make the spell. I need to make the checks on the surviving thugs. You take one quarter of that. One passes. They both I'm pass. Down. They take half. You're down. So they're, they are immediately down to half health. Those two. They're the, the two surviving. One of them's dead. The other one's down to 17. And the cult, that cultist is not bothered by I'm it. down. Mm -hmm. I heard you. Okay. Cesaria's so down. You take a quarter of that. I took eight damage. Eight damage. <laughs> so is our armored one the same one that's spellcasting? The, the armored one is dead. No, this was the cultist that was in okay. there, too. He okay. doesn't take damage because it's his spell. It splashes around him. Okay. But So you would take... You took full damage, right? Yes. 30. Yep. Okay. So the building is now on fire, also. You need to take out that. So now you can oh, see. Now I can see. <laughs> <laughs> one good thing. Uh, there's <clears throat> only the one cultist left. That makes it Corey's turn. Then there, there's one thug. But the longer you stay here, the quicker I'm going to exhaust you with exhaustion points from um, smoke inhalation. So I'm going to start by doing a vow of enmity against the cultist. Fair. So I get advantage on attack rolls. Um, and then I'm going to swing... 
to hit him. Do you have like revive? I don't have revive. Damn. No, are you, your body is incredibly susceptible to fire damage at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have 15 plus 8, so 23. 23. Sign of hit? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so then I have 1 plus 6. Yeah, you guys, six. breaking their armor like that with the warp token, lowered their armor class to 8. And <laughs> I'm also going to um, use my... I don't. I don't have the title of it, but when I hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you you can expend one spell slot to deal radiant damage to the target in addition smite. to the weapons. Is it smite? Smite. Um. So I get to do two d eight plus I'm doing is a level two, so I can do three d eight extra damage. I figured now would be a good time. So my first one was one, and then I get to add these ones to it. So five, ten. 13. Plus so, your strength modifier. Plus Please 5, so 18. Total damage to the cultist. The cultist you hit? Yeah. You killed him. Okay, good. He's I can't dead. take 30 damage again. <laughs> <laughs> that can't happen. Obviously, I can't either. Not that anyone can hear me because I'm dead. Well, down. And actually, I'm going to double check to see what I have as far as spells. I have some healing, but that doesn't help me right now. No. What, uh... Right. I can bless you. I don't think that's going to help very much, though. Okay. Over 10. Um, that's what DC I'm is. giving everybody, oh, at, at the end of this 10. turn, which was Corey's, there's smoke pouring out. At the end of the next turn, you're going to take the first level of exhaustion. Okay. So you need to get her body out. Um, is everybody dead? No, there's still one thug. So it makes it her turn. She's down. you got to make a death save. Plus your... I mean, it's an 11, but you also add your constitution. Yep, so she save. makes one success. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, that makes it the thug's turn. And the thug, who can see clearly now, is going to attack Corey. He makes a multi-attack with his mace. Um, he is completely out of his mind. He rolled an 18, which is a hit, correct? Yep. Yes. And he did seven damage. Okay. And that's his first attack. He makes two. Okay. Second one, one, he rolled a six. Okay, he does not hit with that one. That makes it Leaky's turn. My turn? Yep. I'm not currently engaged with anyone, correct? No. How close am I to her body? Like, ten feet. Okay. I'm going to pick her up mm -hmm. and take her outside. Okay. Um, what's finishes our... Finishes your turn. That's what was turn. um? What exhaustion are we taking right now, by the way? Uh, after... The occultist is dead, so that makes it your turn next. After your turn, you take one level of exhaustion, which gives you disadvantage on ability checks. If you don't get out of the building. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going... Oh, there's a, there's a thug there attacking you. It's... Oh, so I have to, or else I'll... Well, you, you can... an attack of opportunity against you. Well, you can also take a disengage action. You could, yes. do the movement out of the building. Yep, because the building's okay. on fire and smoke inhalation is dangerous, kids. All right, I'm going to disengage, um, okay. and then I'm going to head out of the building. Okay. So we're all out of the building. Okay. Carbon that would make it Cesaria's turn. We're technically still in combat as the firelight just lights up the entire street. Everyone's running and screaming, by the way. Your constitution saving modifier, which you don't have one. Nope. So that's a fail. Yep. Okay. Uh, that makes it the thug's turn, and you see him come to the door, but then the entire building comes down around him. Burying him in ash, soot, flame, and destroyed buildingness. Because that fireball did a lot more damage than you expected. And it kills him. It's a good thing we got out of the building. <laughs> and it ruled a nasty percentile while nobody was paying any attention. <laughs> so. The building comes down in a big explosive rush. Blasts you with heat and fire. Cesaria is unconscious on the ground. Corey is bleeding pretty badly. Leaky's pants have completely gone missing. He has a single scrap, like a little skirt around him now. A little, loin, just a little loin cloth? A little loin cloth. That's all that's left. <laughs> the rest must have been blown away when the house came down. Um, yell out it's for a fancy loin cloth. It is a fancy loin cloth. Yell out for but we're no closer to figuring out where the heck these missing people have gone. So... Are you going to rest for the night, or are you going to push on after you revive Cesaria with... I guess, smelling I salts? I don't know how you bring her back from the brink of death like that so quick. I don't know, but I'm going to make him, he's going to make a medicine check. Fair. 
and hope he doesn't get a critical fail. Yeah. That's 16. a 16. That stabilizes her. We should probably go rest for the night. Yes, I agree. Okay. So we head to whatever inn we were staying in before. We're calling it the Porter's Porter. The Porter's, the Porter's Porter. Porter. All right, and we are going to rest for the night. Okay, so let's do a long rest to so restore your health, your weapons. In the morning, you're going to need to pick up the investigation because the longer that you wait looking for clues, the harder it's going to be to figure out where they're going because the more those crates will become dispersed through the city. Okay. So I don't know if you're going to waste time reporting back to Akron. No, but we're going to go grab... We need to go grab gear. Yep. Okay, so Cesaria, pretty sore from yesterday. That was a rough one. You guys are going to go... Get your stuff. What? Okay, so you guys, after the building has collapsed, there's been a big fire. The watch is coming. The fire brigades are coming. That thug died, burying with it any other secrets that you could possibly have teased out of it about the missing people in Blackgate. And you need to go rest for the night. So you're going back to the porter's porter. You're in. And you're going to have to pick this investigation up in the morning because you don't want the, the lead to get any worse than it already is. Nope. So that's it for this episode. Sorry I destroyed your pants, Leaky. No, you're not. No, I'm not at all. <laughs> I have to pay for those now. I was afraid I was actually going to kill one of you after we had that permadeath conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit too. I was like, oh. What's, what's your maximum health? My maximum health is 38. So with 30 damage. To permadeath, you, you have to double, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I got to double, so I was... Halfway there, almost. Yeah. And that is where we are going to leave our episode. Thank you for listening. I have been Kyle Newcomb, playing the character of Leaky, Exile of the Golden Tur Clan. And I am Jen, playing Cesaria, the rogue. I'm Lindsay, and I'm playing Corey Goth Kanapi. The Worm Crusher. The Worm Crusher. And I am Travis. I am the malignant god of dice and DM. See you next time. If you like us, leave a review, please. Thank you for listening, and we hope you tune in to our next episode. The Cannon Fodder Diecast is produced and edited by Travis Knight. Intro and outro music is composed by Kevin McLeod and used within the Creative Commons rights. The Diecast is intended for entertainment purposes only. Follow us on Twitter at Cannon Fodder Pod for more show news, game updates, and character antics. If you enjoyed the show, please go leave us a review. Thank you for listening, and see you next time. Uh-huh.